Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Smart Money. Now today on Smart Money, we're going to talk about the big opportunity in the mid-cap space. Did you know that if you map the last 5 or even 10 years, the mid-cap index has actually outperformed both the Nifty as well as the small cap index. And there are of course many market leaders in the mid-cap space. So I have with me here Ashish Sumaya of White Oak Capital. He's the CEO there. He's joining in to talk about uh, the, you know, how a long-term investor can perhaps capitalize on the big growth that we're seeing in the mid-cap arena. Ashish, thank you so much for joining us. I think it's you. after a while that you're here with us in the studio. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. So, you know, I, I mean, I want to start by uh, talking about what the opportunity landscape currently is in the mid-cap segment because it is a bit of a treacherous time, right? Mm. The market is very volatile. We are perhaps heading into a recession as well as far as the U.S. is yes. concerned. At such a time, does it make sense uh, to go out there and invest in mid-caps? No, see, it's clearly, if you ask me, small and mid-caps, I mean, for a moment, if we club them together, clearly they are the ones with, you know, much more volatility. I mean, a much larger amplitude in terms of the pluses and minuses and the swings. So from that perspective, you know, if somebody says that equity is for long term, then clearly within that on a relative basis, the outlook for mid and small cap has to be even much uh, longer, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but if you ask me the current juncture, I mean, to the extent that small and mid caps have underperformed large caps in the recent times, uh, so that definitely is always a better time to jump in. Mm. Like if you look at in the last five years, say 2018 beginning, clearly a bad time to jump in. Mm. But let us say after that, mid caps underperformed large caps quite significantly for at least two and a half years. Yeah. That was a good time to jump in. Till August 2021, mid caps again, they were leading large caps. And now in the last nine to 10 months, again, mid caps have been trailing uh, mm. large cap. Mm -hmm. So whenever there is significant underperformance vis-a-vis -vis the broad market or vis-a-vis -vis large caps, I think that's always a good opportunity, provided you are constructive on the markets, mm -hmm. right? Because all of this is uh, relative. It's subject to, yeah, the market's moving up, right? Only absolutely. the overall market moves up, then yeah, mid-cap. It's all relative, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But uh, what are the, what's the opportunity landscape looking like now in the mid-cap arena? See, I think we are at this juncture in the uh, markets, you know, or we are at this stage of evolution. Because if you see the construct of India, if you see two or three things, See, one is obviously it's known that we are an emerging market as far as global references are concerned. Within that, of course, you know, we're a huge country, like 140 crore people nearly, but only $2,000 per capita income. Mm -hmm. And thankfully for us, if you look at IMF data, if you look at trajectory of various other emerging markets over a period of time, thankfully for us, there's a lot of data which actually says that when countries traverse levels of per capita income, then one by one, you know, certain sectors, mm -hmm. they start to become more material and they kind of come of age. Mm -hmm. So, for example, this data to say that when a country crosses five to $6,000 per capita income is when auto, transportation, recreation, mm -hmm. uh, electricals, white goods, all these things become really big. Now, just to put that in perspective in India, the largest quick service restaurants, hotel chain, tire company, the largest the leaders are still mid caps okay. out here. So that's one thing to keep in mind, you know, because we're at the stage of evolution where probably in the next 10, 15 years, a lot of things will come of real world, global scale in that sense. Mm. Whereas right now we are like tiny. The second thing to keep in mind is there are a lot of discussion about export orientation, manufacturing, migration from China, you know, yeah. uh, plus a lot of reforms, mm. formalization, uh, GST. So if you talk about reforms and if you talk about some of these emerging market, you know, related to movements, China, Vietnam, India, manufacturing movement, etc. All of those things are in the mid cap space. Like, for example, if you take the government's PLI, mm. the PLI applies to, say, textiles, mm. auto ancillaries. It applies to electronics, white goods manufacturing. Everything of the PLI uh, arena mm. all happens to be in the mid and small cap Actually, space. you know, we have a very helpful chart right behind you if you'd want to turn around and look at it. So this is the stock categorization, right? I mean, if you look at it, the market cap below 16,440 crores, there are almost 750 stocks. And the mid cap arena between 16,440 and 47,000, there are 150 stocks. So tell us, how does one identify market leaders in this space? So, you know, for the purpose of this discussion, now, see, it's very clear that for mutual fund investors, uh, it's very well defined in regulation that large cap is top 100, mid cap is the next 150. Mm. Now, that's the regulatory definition. For a moment, if we were to say that, okay, you know, let's say 100, next 150, 
and you take for just for the sake of discussion take the next 100 150 hmm. you know more like from 46000 to 16000 instead of that let's say you go to 10 12000 hmm. example just because you know we are not talking here in terms of defining a scheme we are talking more as an investment landscape or yeah. opportunity sure so after leaving large cap if you take the next 200 300 stocks what you will find is that the large cap index is actually mainly the big IT companies, mm. uh, the oil and gas, mm. materials, you know, like metals, commodities, and banks, uh, large banks, right? But so that is a lot of it is global cyclical, mm. lot of it is macro related stuff. Mm. But if you're a bottom up guy, you know, who's looking at industries, who's looking at trends of companies, then I think the rich area, you know, the happy hunting ground is actually the mid caps and the, the surface. yeah so all the examples i gave you about sectors which benefit from production linked incentives yes. sectors which benefit from the consumption boost which comes when our per capita income goes to the next level mm. all of that is somewhere in the middle bucket so let's talk about that middle bucket which is the bright yellow bucket right mid caps sure. because you mentioned yeah. that the largest uh, the market leader in the tire space yeah which is Balkrishna Industries, yes. the market leader in the hotel space, Indian hotels, Indian hotels. Uh, the market leader in uh, the like you would say quick service restaurants like Jubilant Foodworks, Jubilant Food Works, all of them are very mid -caps. recently page industries. Yes, all of them are mid caps. So tell us how uh, does Voltas one... for example. Okay. So obviously they're not recommendations, but just the biggest refrigeration and air conditioning company. Yes. So all of those are actually mid caps. The, so, so that brings us to the next question, right? How do you identify market leaders in the mid cap space? These are, of course, the companies that are well known. But what else? But, you know, look at it this way that don't you think, like I'll give you just one statistic. I don't know the latest number, but till very recently. So India has, say, about 250 million households, which is, say, 25 crore. Mm -hmm. So if I just throw a question at gen in general that how many households do you think have air conditioning in India? Mm -hmm. I don't know the latest number. It was as little as only 3 million. Okay. So we are talking number of air conditioners, talking households, yeah. right? So three million out of two hundred and fifty million. Now just look at it this way. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of top-down investing, yeah. but generally, if you chanced upon this broad brush, see, a lot of times the broad picture mm. is what gives you the lead, mm. and then you dig deeper, right? So as a broad statement, if somebody says that there is an air conditioning and refrigeration company which is the leader in India, 80-year-old company owned by Tata Group, mm -hmm. and still it's a mid-cap. Mm -hmm. And where is the penetration level of white goods in India? Yeah. And what lays, what, what is ahead of us in the next 5-10 years? So these are the kind of things which will give you a very good lead that, okay, what to then dig deeper into. Mm -hmm. And then if not the leader, the second best guy, the third best guy, mm -hmm. you have to do, you know, bottom-up homework. Yeah. But a lot of leads get thrown up when you find, you know, that what are the growth pockets, mm. like, you know, when per capita income rises, uh, when regulation, say formalization now after GST, mm -hmm. so which industries are going through consolidation. Mm. Till some time back, I'm sure even Titan was a mid cap, right? Mm. But it's a biggest beneficiary of consolidation and market getting formalized. So, you know what, let's do one thing. Let's get all the market leaders on the screen, right, in, in just a bit. So, now let's go one by one. So, I'm also a firm believer that if you're in it for the long haul, you better stick with the market leaders. So, the largest tyre company is a mid-cap, which is Balkrishna Industries. The largest hotel company is a mid-cap, which is Indian Hotels. Um, the largest, that's the hotel chain for you. Now, um, okay, you know, we'll keep getting those uh, market leaders up on the screen. Um, the largest industrial bearing company, Schaeffler. What do you do when a market leader, is going through a bit of a challenge. So Jubilant mm -hmm. Foodworks, for example, right? They had some management issues in the middle. Yes, There's a lot right. of competition as well. Bal Krishna had raw material costs surging. Do you keep the faith because they are market leaders or do you be agile and shift gears based on what's happening currently? So, you know, see, I mean, there is always this, uh, I mean, we're not getting into theory, but there is always this thing about whether you would do it yourself or go to a professional, so whether you do mid-cap stock picking yourself or go to a mutual fund or a PMS guy. So keeping all those discussions aside, in generally as far as your question is concerned, I would just say that if a market leader, you know, every market leader, mm. definitely there will be macros which will create headwinds. Mm. Uh, sometimes, like you said, management changes. Now, is that macro development or is that management change enough to throw them off track? I think that is the is only... It? What do you feel? I don't, I don't think really? so. I don't, I don't think so. See, I think that some of these companies, typically, you know, mid-cap, they are mid-cap purely because of the industry being slightly underpenetrated. Mm. But in their own right, their leadership, 
They're organizations. Large companies, yeah. yeah, and I don't think the leadership boils down to a raw material cost advantage or just one person who's a CEO. Mm. Uh, again, I'm repeating, they are mid cap purely because the industry is small, but they are leaders. Mm. So a lot of the quality aspects of these companies, whether it's their management, whether it's their differentiators, strength of brand, a mm. lot of those things could be as good or better than some of the large caps. Yes. It's just a it's just that the sector is small, so the leader is small. Yeah. But you know, when the sector grows, uh, you just need to be sure that they have in it, they have in it for them to maintain the uh, leadership. And the pie is anyway growing, right? I mean, two cases in point, and we should just get them on the sure. screen: uh, Page Industries and Indian Hotels. Right? The stocks have been hitting new highs. Uh, the pie is ge in general, the apparel uh, business is growing, industry is growing, and hotels, as we know, has come back in a big way. So what do you do if these stocks are um, sort of expensive, I mean, compared mm. to their peers? Do you still stick with them or do you sort of, you know, move to say second rung or third rung players? So, you know, look, we are professional managers. So if you ask us, our answers sometimes could be different. And within professional managers also, there could be different answers. Mm. But let's just put it this way, that if you're a proprietary investor, if you're an individual investor, uh, you might just hold it for the long haul. Mm. And then some of these pricing related, uh, you know, issues, because stock prices sometimes really shoot up mm -hmm. and then they're discounting more than a couple of years of earnings, which means that eventually there could be flatlining or a, a price correction as well. So if you're a proprietary investor, if you're an individual investor, you might just want to hold it. But guys like us, we have to beat the benchmark consistently. Mm -hmm. So we cannot live with long price corrections and we cannot live with long sideways or you know time correction kind of uh, mm. moves so we we might want to kind of take profit and be cognizant of the fact that we need to preserve relative performance so the answers for us or considerations for us might be different from a individual investor but i would generally say that uh, to the extent that we are paid to outperform and paid for relative performance we <laughs> would be kind of <laughs> price conscious don't say paid for relative performance you guys are paid for outperformance <laughs> yeah that's what i meant outperformance over the index so we over definitely have to yeah. uh, we definitely have to uh, beat the benchmark so we better be conscious okay so this is my favorite part right where we compare data hard facts i want to know how has the mid cap index returns been compared to say large caps and small caps over the last maybe five years 10 years 15 years and i do have a plate here so if you want to refer to that please go ahead yeah so see this is where i think most people i mean you know if they dwell on this data for a moment most people would be surprised because a lot of times people would have expected that the small companies, you know, see, theoretically, people say high risk, high return. Mm -hmm. So it will not be totally out of order uh, if some people thought that in the long haul, small cap index might have done much better than mid cap. But here's the problem. The problem is that the small cap index, the universe is very, very big. A lot of accidents, generally a lot of governance issues, uh, where you said, you know, leadership fails. Mm -hmm. All of those things, they typically tend to happen in the small cap space a lot more. And they so get affected, of, I think small caps get affected more by disruption, technological yes. disruptions, etc. A lot more than mid caps. And, right? and, and lesser probability that an industry leader is a small cap. Well, I can think of some examples there also. But the point is that mid caps, like I said, you know, a lot of them are leaders. Mm. So their management quality and a lot of the other quality parameters might be like a large cap, but you cannot necessarily extrapolate that to the mm. small cap space. So what is interesting about the data clearly is that, and this is going to be a surprise for a lot of viewers, which is that the mid cap index has outperformed the large cap index and the small cap index okay. on every time frame. And you can see like, you know, almost like by a mile. Yeah. And if you, even if you were to put up the whole market, which is Nifty 500, yeah. you will find that mid cap has even outperformed Nifty 500. And look at that, the Nifty 100 in 10 years has gained just 13.4% as compared to that, it's a big outperformance by the mid caps, right? I mean, Absolutely. one wouldn't have expected Absolutely. it. Even I was quite surprised yeah. when I uh, was putting and the I'm table together. I'm quite sure that, you know, if somebody says that there is, let's say, you know, you're showing this as of 30th June or 31st July, mm -hmm. uh, people will be surprised to know that even if you, I'm, I know for a fact that even if you took rolling returns, mm -hmm. which is that instead of a point-to-point -point data, if you took, you know, every day you saw what is the five-year return mm -hmm. and then you compared the averages, you would still find that mid-cap has done better than Nifty 100, small cap, as well as Nifty 500. Okay, well, on that note, we're going to take a short commercial break. Very interesting conversation with Ashish Samaya White Oak, but don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a bit.
Welcome back. Thanks for watching Smart Money on CNBC TV 18. Today we're speaking to Ashish Somaya of White Oak about the opportunities in the mid-cap space, especially the mid-cap market leaders. And very interestingly, if you map the last 5 or even 10 years, or even 15 years for that matter, mid-caps have outperformed in a big way, outperformed both large as well as small caps. But uh, Ashish, uh, you know, I just wanted to understand currently what situation are we in as far as either regulatory or policy tailwinds are concerned? Um, what could drive the mid-cap performance in that sense? Yes, yeah, so we did make like a you know, brief mention in the uh, earlier part of the conversation, which is very important, that if you see post-COVID, and I personally, if you really ask me, it's not just post-COVID, it's even demographics and it's even the macroeconomic construct. But post-COVID, there is an accelerated discussion about you know, manufacturing being diversified, supply chains being diversified, and a lot of industries moving from China to uh, say countries like India. Mm. There's data to say that you know almost 35 to 40 percent of that moves to Vietnam, mm. uh, but Vietnam is a different case. You know because if it's a Chinese business diversifying, they might choose Vietnam. Mm. But as far as multinational companies are concerned, they are choosing India. So 20 percent of all manufacturing which moves out of China comes to India, and that's why the government obviously has announced these PLIs, mm. right? So all the PLI announcements are related to uh, auto ancillaries. Uh, they are related to electronics components, white goods, uh, EV batteries, many of those like, you know, pharma APIs, chemicals. Now, all of those, so those are, that's a big change in policy. The government is really incentivizing. We already, we have 15% in tax for new uh, businesses. On top of that, there are these PLIs, which are like cashback kind of thing. So all of these sectors which I named and subsectors, they are not large cap. There's no large cap companies in these sectors fully populated by mid-cap and to some extent small cap. So that's one policy tailwind. The second thing is everything related to our regulations and governance. So if you see consolidation because of GST, yeah. increased tax compliance, you know, more boost to the, uh, uh, you know, like kind of uh, hit out on the parallel economy mm -hmm. and more uh, move towards formalization. Actually, more the need to invest in mid-caps and market leaders, right? I mean, increased Absolutely. tax compliance is something Absolutely. that sometimes small companies can't uh, get up to speed Absolutely. with. So, and even consolidation. So all the market share gains because of consolidation, a yeah. lot of those things, if you take these whole sectors which are related to home interiors, you know, like wires and cables and electric fittings and fixtures, mm -hmm. if you take tiles, if you take paints, right, a lot of the white goods and consumer related stuff, so wherever it is formalization, consolidation, uh, PLI, government policy, a lot of those things are happening in this space which happens to be populated by mid and small cap companies. Because like I said, the large cap index has a lot of big IT companies, global commodities, cyclicals, metals, uh, you know, oil and gas, those kinds of things. Mm. So that obviously is not driven by what we are discussing. Okay, so give us some examples, right? I mean, which are the mid-cap companies? And I want to give that disclaimer right away that these are not buy recommendations. But which are the mid-cap companies that are not just market leaders, but have the potential to become large caps over the next five to ten years? So this is the holy grail, right? Because everybody invests in mid-caps in the anticipation. Like, you know, all the examples I'm giving, whether I speak of per capita, whether I speak any of these things. Ultimately, the point is that these industries or these sectors will come of age, they'll come of scale, mm -hmm. and a lot of the mid-caps will eventually become large caps. So if I can give you example, I mean, I give you two examples. Let's say, for example, uh, there's one outlier, right? Say l and Infotech, till very recently, used to be upper end of small cap or just a mid cap and it's become a large cap. So there are very few examples that in a five year holding period, a small and mid sized company actually becomes large cap. Yeah. Right. And we did some data crunching, which actually says that if you hold the mid cap index, like a physics, like a chemistry lab experiment, you hold the mid cap index for five years and just go away, come back five years later, 40, or 40 to 50 percent of those companies will remain mid cap, but give you a decent return. Mm. There are still 15 to 18 percent of the companies which have a track record of moving from mid cap into large cap okay. and giving outlier returns. So what are these examples? Like say, for example, if you see, I just mentioned to you, like Titan, for example, was a small company or a mid cap company and then became large. Yes. Now, if you look at it in today's terms, again, very difficult to forecast, but if you see in today's terms, a lot of the chemical space, which was small cap and has now become mid cap, but if you look at it at a five year, five, seven year horizon and whatever we're talking in terms of consolidation or uh, manufacturing and exporting, 
then a lot of those could actually that space mm. the second one i think is a lot of companies in the consumer discretionary space mm. we discuss some examples right but uh, it's not necessary that all of those would get stuck in time at 30 40000 crore market cap so like which ones are like say for example a voltas i give you an, yeah. I, i mentioned to you or all the market leaders we mentioned like mm. say indian hotels mm. or you know quick service restaurants etc so there's no reason for a country like india which is 2000 dollar per capita but 140 crore people mm. there's no reason why these companies would remain i can give you another example like say vip industries is one of the largest luggage makers in, is the largest in india yeah. but not just india also one of the largest luggage makers all over the world if i'm not wrong is still a small cap company okay uh, i would but be doing a disservice very hard during the pandemic yeah of course the yeah i mean see that is a situation specific thing yes, yes. but i don't think that's going to be forever uh, and i would be doing a disservice a disservice if i don't give you examples from my industry yeah <laughs> <laughs> so go the, ahead please. yeah so you know i mean one of the most respected names uh, you know like say for example hdfc is listed mm. they are a mid cap company and you know that the asset management industry has like a long way to go whether you speak about digitization capital market adaption savings and investing so i mean you know if you see in india next 10 to 15 years mm. a lot of the mid cap space is going to really scale and it's evident in the data yes my guess is that if you did all this data crunching 10 years back yes. i don't think mid cap would have been the best performing benchmark okay. but in recent times it's turning out that way and my guess is it will sustain like that for the next 10 15 years purely because of the stage of evolution that we are in and even if you look at it, the 15 year uh, you know if in the last 15 years it's what a 13% gain that the mid cap index has given not bad at all i don't know any other asset class that will give you a 13% return unless you're doing stock picking yourself and you're exceptional at it yeah. but if you had put your money in just a mid cap fund right yeah. over the last 15 years of 13 yeah of course we are using indices for ease of discussion but you know professional managers or anybody who who thinks that he's a stock picker should ideally uh, you know uh, do better mm-hmm. my guess is that this data wouldn't have been like this if you did the same data crunching 5 6 years back Uh, so i think something has changed in our construct in the last in the recent few years because of all the tailwinds we discussed and my sense is it's just the beginning it will remain like that for times to come at least foreseeable future okay on that optimistic note we let you go ashish thank you so much it was a, a very informative and entertaining discussion thanks a lot for being with us on smart money uh, with that it's a wrap thanks a lot for watching we'll be back again same time same place next week